suddenly as I sit here in this bed and review over my life and having the contact with the Orishas, uh, that has been very profound, my first experience in this higher altered states of consciousness. But they have been showing me and telling me all this time about my consciousness. And sitting here, you know, sometimes we sit down and we review our spiritual path. Just reflect. Just sit back and reflect and all the pieces begin to come together, you know. It's like putting a puzzle together, walking on this spiritual path. Now that I sit back and I reflect, last night I had the most profound experience in meditation as I began to explore uh, the inner worlds of the shamanic journey. And I didn't think I was going to be able to travel to the realm of the Orishas. But to my surprise, I was able to do it with no problem. In fact, it happened automatically. I began to travel. Uh, the When I made it there, uh, first, let me talk about the travel. Uh, usually when I begin a shamanic journey, I go through a full ritual of raising the energy, uh, playing inspirational music that gets me in a uh, inspirational mindset, you know, really lift my vibrations, you know, really empower me. So I do that for about 20 minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Then I start setting my intentions by uh, invoking the energy in the room. I might say a prayer to the Orishas and state that my angels come around and create a circle of protection around me uh, while I journey. And uh, I go through this full ritual and then I go into meditation. I dim the lights, light my incense. You know, I have incense going the whole time. <clears throat> excuse me, while I'm doing this ritual. And so, uh, during the ritual, after the ritual, I set my, I sit down and make sure my candles are lit and I get my crystals, you know, what I'm, whatever I feel like I'm going to need on my journey. It's going to keep me focused on the journey and keep me protected, you know, make the journey as real as possible when I go into meditation. This is how you travel the inner worlds by going into your own mind and seeing what's there and letting it happen. So usually when I go on a journey, I patch myself in by envisioning myself uh, somewhere in a um, in my favorite uh, area, park, you know, somewhere outside, uh, you know, where it's trees, where it's nature. And I tried to do it this time, but my mind didn't do it. It automatically, um, when, you know, it automatically took flight. Uh, it started flying and I asked my spirit guys, I was like, what's going on here? And they were like, we're taking you, um, we're taking you to see the Orisha. And I was like, really? And they were like, yeah, I'll just sit back and relax. So I take this ride, you know, I'm just flying. I'm flying beyond the cosmos. We went way beyond the cosmos, went there pretty quick. Uh, it, you know, it's like going through a time machine. I tell you, when you uh, begin to take these flights, uh, just letting your mind unfold and letting it do what it does because this stuff, these things are already in our DNA. 
if we take the time and sit back and let the mind do what it does in its natural state, it will do it. Um, you know, you program it, you tell it what to do, and it will do it. It's just like a computer or anything else. Uh, you know, anything else in our body, it, we can control it. It's a muscle. You know, we can control it, and this is the way we strengthen it. So I get there, and it is this cluster or orbit. And around this, this light, a uh, orbit, or orb, I would like to say orb. I'm going to say orb. Around this orb of light in this, this, this isolated place in the universe, it is the most, the way I can, you know, the only way I can explain it, it is the first and the oldest form of the universe. It's a place in the universe where everything comes from. And people think nothing happens there, but, you know, or nothing is going on there. But there in that place in the universe, that's the only way I can explain it, uh, the way the Orishas explain it to me, and that's where they dwell. So when I get there, I see this orb, and it's this rainbow, like this rainbow around this, this orb. And so when I get inside this orb, I get inside of it, and it's this beautiful temple with, you know, these columns in front of it, and these gold stairs. The whole temple was gold, but not like the substance gold. Uh, it, it was um, a luminary gold. And I began to touch, touch it. You know, touch things in in uh, this orb because everything in it had a sparkle to it. You know, it seemed to like sparkle. And um, soon as I did this, uh, the Orisha appeared. The seven Orishas everyone talked about appeared. And I see Oya and I see Abatala. Uh, I see Shango. I see Yamaya, I see Oshun, you know, these are the ones that made themselves, you know, introducing, I've seen the rest of them, but these are the ones who personally let me know that they had been working uh, uh, with me, and I've seen uh, uh, Iligua or uh, Ilegba, I know him as Ilegba, but I see him there as well. Uh, you know, it was something. Oya introduced herself to me as my head and said that she was dealing with me with the changes around me and within my within me in my mind. And I and she had on the colors there too. I cannot dismiss the colors. The colors were very they were primary. Usually when I go to other worlds, the colors are very chromatic, kind of dark. Uh but really, uh, um, you know, just really deep, colorful, dark colors. This was different. This was primary, very glittery. Uh, the substance was very different. Uh, you know, she had on these red, uh, this bright, bright red. She had a turban on her head. Uh, her clothes were kind of layered, uh, like with red and purple, uh, purple linings. Uh, then I seen Oshun. Uh, Oshun, uh, and that was the trip. Oshun had at this big, uh, beautiful afro. She had this big, beautiful afro, and she had these, uh, uh, like the, the like chandelier glasses, whatever. You know, that's the only way I can call it chandelier. And I had never seen her like that before. And she had on this, uh, long white this long white gown and I looked over there and I was like you know I looked over there at her and I was like is that Oshun and she said yes this is Oshun uh and and she spoke to me and and was telling me how she was helping me uh heal as well uh and uh Yamaya uh Yemiya, she was telling me how she was helping me heal the wounds 
uh, of the mothers uh, in my family. So it was a, it was a it was a profound experience. Uh, uh, they instructed me to lie down on this this it looked like a little bed it looked like something out of star trek again this is our psychology this is our psychology these, are, these archetypes live within us and once we condition our mind that we want to have these relationships and unfold our minds with them uh it can have a tremendous impact on the changes that we want to see in our life but let me go on i lay on this bed and instantly, um, I can see them begin to work on me, uh, this gold light. And they were telling me that they were changing some, uh, you know, that my energy needed a little bit, a little bit more work on it. So they were working on me. Uh, all of a sudden, sudden, I see this, uh, I see these other Orishas. I mean, it was, and they, you know. They're angelic. They're very angelic. And I've been around angels before, but this energy from these angels, because they're primordial, uh, it was such a refined energy. Uh, and in my mind's eye, uh, how they look to me, uh, they were very, very light. Uh, you could tell they were, they were angelic beings, but... Uh, and then I can see some of their faces. They look just like me. They were brown, uh, angelic beings. And so I was I was captivated by that. I was very captivated by that. And they began to chant. And I, you know, at first I, I, I was, you know, I was, I was relaxed. I was relaxed into the meditation until... My reasoning mind, which is my left part of our brain, because we're using the right part of our brain to enter into these inner worlds. Uh, for those of you who have been following me when I talk about Jung and shamanism and, you know, the research I've done on it. But anyway, the left part of my brain was just like, look, you're listening to a meditation uh, audio and you don't have chanting on this audio. So how are the Orishas chanting to you? How are you listening to this chanting? And all of a sudden, I hear my spirit guides intervene and say, it's okay, the Orisha, we changed this setting on the audio. That's, we've done that. You can relax and continue, continue the healing. And I I, rela I continue to relax and I let the chanting, uh, you know, go on and on. And I can see the Orisha, uh, the other angelic Orishas around this bed chanting, uh, sending this, this powerful energy towards me. It was a white uh, energy and lined in gold. Uh, that, you know, that was something. And so I continue to stay there uh, with the, within a minute. Uh, the meditation was over. I was back uh, present in my body. Uh, like I said, I set the timer. I usually set the timer is when I'm going when I'm going through a journey. Uh, that's the best thing to do I, for me because I don't want to be disoriented and if you're not used to journeying, it's easy to do. So, uh, and I'm just journeying. I'm just conscious journeying. And I think I've been doing it all along unknowingly. But, um, I'm, you know, I said it for 20 minutes. And um, I can tell you that was a profound, you know, journey. I learned a lot of things from, Abatala, all of them told me something about myself. Abatala, uh, he said, uh, I remember when I when I saw him there, and the and these are the this the realms of the Orisha. This is where they live. Now I've done a little research on the subject, and others have, you know, 
have did the journey to the inner worlds uh, and met with the uh, Orisha. They say the same thing, uh, you know, close to close to what I'm saying. It's kind of familiar. You know, it's, it, you know what I've noticed about doing the research on this and studying this, that most people have similar stories when they come in contact with these uh, inner, you know, these inner worlds and meeting these beings. We we have a common thread uh, in, in some of our stories. That's the best way I can explain it. But uh, what I've learned from Abatala is that uh, when I had my first uh, shamanic journey, it, it, it was a bad trip. Uh, and I thought I was losing it. He the one helped me put my mind back where it needed to be and was telling me that he, he sent me. Because it felt like a near-death experience uh, when I had my bad trip, you know. Uh, and I was with someone and uh i had a spiritual experience you know it was a it was a cannabis session to them but to me uh it was much more because i've always you know even when i was young i was a very a uh, spiritual person and at that time i was a real strong practicing i had just left uh the hebrew temple which i was a real strong uh hebrew practitioner uh, you know, practicing faith, you know, I was, I was really heavy into my faith and had just left the church. And that's a long story. But if you read my book, uh, how I came to meet the ancestors, my free book, I tell you about that story, uh, about how I was very young involved in church at a very young age, but I had a very, uh, a trippy moment. I thought I was going to let my hair down and just, uh, you know, have some fun with my relatives and, uh, we were just around, you know, partying, uh, drinking, smoking, and uh, I end up, you know, I end up having a bad trip. Uh, you know, it was not casual fun, fun for me. And most of the things in that bad trip uh, happened, you know, happened. Uh, I seen a lot of things within that, you know, within that trip and I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it until I uh, became a metaphysical minister. Now the bad trip, which was nothing but a vision. It was nothing but a vision because I seen a lot of things that were gonna happen in my life in images and I didn't understand why I was seeing these images, you know? And I was wide awake seeing these images. But, uh, and I didn't put the, pieces together and, and I'm putting the pieces together now um, but what I learned from Abatala he sent me back and uh, he was letting me know that he was there because during this vision I seen a very very bright light and I heard a man's voice but I could not see him and it was just so bright it was just uh, it was it was so bright it was unbelievable I couldn't even look toward the light it was so bright uh, it was just white. You just could, it was so blinding because if you saw it, it would just blind you. It was just that white. And Abatala was just like, that was me. You know, I don't want to send you back. And I don't want to told you to get on the path of your destiny. I, I remember what was said during, during that vision, you know, uh, that was something too. But, um, he explained to me, he was with me and Shango explained to me, he's always been my inner warrior. And that, and I knew my one of my spirit guides was an indigenous person because when I see him, I see him uh, dressed in indigenous. You know, he looked like an indigenous person. He has this loin cloth on, and he has these tattoos, these markings on his head, and he has a uh, leather. He wears a leather uh, armband on. On I think it's his is it right, it's right arm I think it's his right arm, and he carries a staff a stick uh a staff or a stick with him all at all times, and uh his energy feels masculine and protective, and Shango was letting me know that he had appointed he is the one responsible for appointing my guardian angel, uh for defending me because he knew that I would uh. I would, uh, you know, uh, come in contact with aggressive energies, 
in my life. So he sent the most powerful uh, warrior guardian angel with me. And I was like, wow. So, you know, those are the things that I learned there on that journey. Uh, and then I, and then I have to stay objective to uh, as to stay grounded. So when I come out of these, the journey, I'm always objective and I, I try to find a scientific explanation to explain these, uh, you know, uh, these experiences. And so uh, I go to research and seeing, is this is possible? You know, is my mind really doing this? Yes, our minds can really do this. It's unbelievable. I, I I I wouldn't believe it had I not experienced it. And so, uh, I say this. You know, I'm telling this story to inspire others. You know, uh, because when I first got into this, I thought I was going to have to go into Ifa. I thought I was going to have to go into Santeria. I thought I was going to have to go into an African traditional religion to uh, connect with the Orishas. I had did a lot of study on the Orishas. I love the energy, uh, reading about them and reading about the stories of, of the Orisha. Uh, and then the more I did more research on them, I found out there was angelic forces. And I, I was very um, comfortable with working with angels because when I first... Um, like what, 15 years ago or more, um, when I first started working with angels, they, they introduced themselves to me. Um, they, you know, I was at a bookstore and they knocked a book off the shelf on angels. Uh, and I started working with them. They introduced themselves to me. And so it was very, I was very excited, uh, you know, interested in working with the Orisha because they, uh, are the prime mortal beings of the angels. You know, they're the first angelic archetypes. So I was very, uh, you know, interested in working with them. And, you know, and and to find out, you know, because of what I, when I was trying to talk to priests and people, uh, traditional practitioners of Ifa, uh, that were in a religion, I felt very restricted and I was just like, I, I can't do this, you know, but the more research I did in Orisha, I came to understand that anyone can work with them. You don't have to be a part of a religion, you know, my mind, uh, you know, sometimes our mind gets so stuck in things having to be a certain kind of way. We forget this spiritual path. It's all about finding our way, you know, and that experience taught me that as well, that, you know, we have the connection uh, with these inner worlds and we can, uh, if we trust our minds and go within ourselves, we can access uh, these inner worlds and have these experiences. You know, is this real? Yeah, it's real. It's your psychology. You know, uh, all the research points to this being real. You know, so we cannot um, discount the own power of our minds, you know, uh, you, and and I and my personal feelings, I feel like we are doing ourselves a disservice uh, by not even practicing uh, this form of meditation because it's so powerful. But I had to share this, uh, you know, I thought about making a video on it, but I was like, I don't want to look crazy on video, so I was more comfortable with making an audio on uh <laughs> on this, you know. That's you know, I felt more comfortable. But and what I and another thing what I learned about the Orisha, because when I was touching this substance in meditation, I learned so much within 20 minutes because time is so different there. 20 minutes over here is maybe like a you know, because there's no really no time over there. So I don't even know. But you, you always seem like you're over there longer. Okay. 
that that's the best way I, I can explain it. And just imagine if I was over there in an hour, uh, what I would ha- have learned. But, you know, maybe one day I would I would um, implement an hour of being over there. But when I was over there, when I was touching this substance, trying to see what this place was made of, because like I said, everything glittered. But when you touched it, you went through it like it was like jello. It felt like jello. Okay. It felt like jello. And I was asking the Orishas, I was like, what is this substance? And they all looked at me and smiled. They was like, this is the same substance we made everything on earth from. Everything on earth, even you, is made from this substance. It's a very refined matter. Uh, It's very, very refined. And uh, we use this to create the universe and everything on earth. And I was like, wow, you know. And so those are those little things um, that they share with us, but they are more important in helping us understand our thinking and also uh scientific things that we didn't we didn't even you know we didn't even understand in 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 a book terms and then you go to read a book and then you find these these explanations in these books so this information is so important but i also remember at one point uh, when I came in contact with my spirit guides, I began to have these uh, high, high um, streams of inspirational thought. I mean, they were consistent. It, I had never experienced nothing on that level before. And I was experiencing an altered state of consciousness during this time. And I started having these heavy streams of inspirational thought uh moved through my mind and it was blowing my mind because my I, the vibration was so high i just started having all these creative uh inspirational uh thoughts and you know and voices come through my mind you know and i was just like oh my god what is this it was like somebody else was speaking to me in my mind giving me all this inspiration and all this motivation and all this empowerment it was like somebody else and I remember asking my God that, and uh, they were like, uh, we're a high form of energy. You start thinking about something positive, and uh, you, and, and, and automatically we are attracted to that. And so we just latched on and start uh, increasing it because that inspirational thought, that one inspirational thought uh, attracted us to you. And you're vibrating at the, this that frequency, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, it was tripping me out." So, um, you know, and I was like, "You know, what? How is this possible?" And they began to explain to me atoms, what atoms was, what thought forms was. They were really trying to explain it to me, uh, and that's physics. I never understood physics. You know, I didn't really uh, study the elemental chart at school. <laughs> You know, I didn't care to learn, you know, in depth that, but they were, they were under, they were explaining it to me, molecules and how our mind works and how, um, uh, thoughts are on a, at, a, at atomic level, even though we can't see them, they're still present. And I believe with that, the substance that I seen in the realm of the Orisha, was made of that same substance. So it's little things like that that they share with us uh, that that is of really importance and it also validates our experience. But I uh, hope this audio doesn't seem awkward and that you gain something from it because it's the first time I'm using an audio uh, and this is also the first time that I have just went in depth about my journey meditation experience. I don't hear many uh, uh, African traditional uh, religion, you know, practitioners talk about uh, their meditation experiences. Uh, And I thought that was very, I thought that, that this is very important since I'm unfolding. And then I don't see 
a lot of other people talk about uh, this experience, these meditation experiences that they have. But I thought I would share this here with you, and I hope that it helps you. Thank you so much for following our channel and supporting us. Uh, and, you know, light and love.